me now share about what we know about this novel coronavirus. This virus comes from the family of coronavirus, which includes other viruses such as MERS and SARS, as well as the milder variants causing common cold. The medical consensus at this moment is that the novel coronavirus is more transmissible but appears less deadly than SARS. Evidence suggests that the rate of human-to-human -human transmission of this virus appears to be higher than that of SARS. For now, the evidence also suggests that transmission is mostly via droplets. What this means is that the virus is carried within droplets emitted from an infected person over a short distance, such as when a person coughs or sneezes. If these droplets come into contact with the eyes, nose or mouth of an individual directly or indirectly through hands that have come into contact with these droplets, the individual may become infected. To clarify, there is no evidence currently to suggest that the virus is airborne. There are other viruses, such as the chickenpox, which can easily be transported via air, via air currents and do not require droplets to contact the eyes or nose. The novel coronavirus is not in this category of viruses. The novel coronavirus could also transmit through surface contact. Let me explain. When a person sneezes or coughs, the droplets fall onto the surfaces of tables and chairs, and the virus may remain alive for up to a few days. When someone else touches the surfaces of these tables and chairs, the virus can be transferred to the, his hands and if he then rubs his eyes or nose without washing his hands, he may become infected. So we should wash our hands. This is also why we only quarantine the close contacts of confirmed cases. For more transient, transient contacts, such as individuals that the, that the confirmed cases may have walked past in malls or hotels, the risk of transmission is low. For coronavirus generally, the person is most infectious when he is displaying, there is evidence of limited spread from a person without symptoms during the incubation period. However, this form of transmission may be uncommon and has so far involved isolated cases only. At this point, the evidence still points towards higher transmissibility when the person is displaying symptoms. As such, medical professionals, both overseas and in Singapore, have advised that the most effective way that we can protect ourselves is to practice good personal hygiene. We should regularly wash our hands with soap and water and avoid touching our face with our hands. These may sound simple, but actually they are very difficult to do because all of us touch our face all the time. Even at a meeting when we have on this ministry task force, while I was speaking, I was touching my face <laughs> until Minister Lawrence Wong nudge me with his elbow and say, stop touching your face. <laughs> so it is simple but extremely difficult, but are actually very effective in preventing all kinds of infection. Potential infection from asymptomatic persons, in fact, is less likely to be from coughing or sneezing directly because they don't have symptoms. They are not sneezing or coughing, but more likely by touching contaminated surfaces for which masks offer no protection. Wearing a mask when we are well often gives us a false sense of security instead, and we are more likely to touch our faces when we constantly adjust our masks, which is one way the disease spreads. At the same time, we need to protect others, our loved ones, friends, colleagues, and fellow Singaporeans that we come into contact with. If we are sick, we should rest and recover at home as far as possible. If we do need to go out to see a doctor, for example, we should wear a surgical mask to protect others. So this is when mask is needed, when we are unwell and have to go out.